Hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live here in Victoria, British Columbia aboard a classic wooden motor cruiser that's in amongst all those uh, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy. All the while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. Well, those of you who are familiar with this neck of the woods will recognize MV Coho, the ferry that runs from downtown Victoria to downtown Point Angeles in a very, very easy way uh, to cross over into Washington State. And that's what I'm doing today. Yes, Lady Zephyrus and I are off on a bit of a road trip. But before that, we do have to jump back in time and jump into the episode that you're about to watch. And that's, well, carrying on in the wheelhouse aboard MV Poem. And yes, it will end with Tungwa. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Okay, largely manageable now. Where is that notebook? Aha. When you live on a boat, Everything has to fit in a bin. We've a drill press. <laughs> you know, I really only have this thing for one reason, and that's to drill bungs. And the plug cutter is actually in it. Now, if you've been following along long enough to have seen me use this at the Marathon Hollow, you will know that this big motor is the most anemic little motor I have ever worked with. Okay. All right. Whoa, you stay put. Alright, well that cutter is pretty dull. Oh, it's also a half inch bung cutter. That's not the right size. Woohoo, brand new one. I use the Veritas uh, plug cutters from Lee Valley here in Canada. I like them because they're tapered, thus a snug plug cutter. Oh, so sweet. you may remember that I usually mark the grain direction on my bungs uh, in advance of installing them so that I can move fairly quickly when the time comes um, but I'm not going to do that today because I install interior bungs dry so I can take my time and I don't have to worry about it quite so much Yeah, the nice thing about dry fitting the bungs is that you can trim them right away. Alright. Okay, you'll remember I mentioned that this is the lowest part of the structure and well that's true and I really don't want to build anything lower than this. The only problem is if I'm going to put a door in, or a pair of doors, and I think I've decided I'm going to, those doors are going to arch up in the middle and have to open inwards. Well, this point is at least a quarter of an inch higher than this point, which is the same height as the next beam in. So if this door is to swing, it would hit that beam. So I have to lower this side of it at least a quarter of an inch so that it will be able to swing 90 degrees. I can tell you I would have been very upset if I built the whole thing and tried to open the door and it stopped here. Okay, so I have a solution. I'm gonna take this nice thin little piece of quarter inch sapelli mahogany and I'm gonna laminate it to the top of the beam here, or the bottom of the beam, 
and that'll create a bit of a frame. It'll actually solve a bit of a problem up here where I transition between uh, this piece of, well, you'll see it in a minute anyway, and it'll uh, tidy all that up and look really quite nice, I think, by the time it's all done. I just now have to rescribe and recut the tops of the posts door post, door jam, frame, I don't know what we're calling these, and uh, then I can finish these up and get them ready for oil. All right, so it's time to sand down our little chairs so they fit underneath and become keys again. And for that, I'll resurrect the trusty uh, stationary belt sander. Woohoo! And time to do lots and lots of sanding. All right, with the heavy sanding done, now just a little bit of an ease. Again, the theme of this boat is no broad uh, radiuses, just gentle easing. Okay then, with everything down here and up to here pretty much ready to go, it's time to deal with this big long arch here. Now I did remove from here a narrow piece of Marenti trim um, to be fair, I can't find it. I didn't know if I was going to reuse it, but it certainly would have been a handy template. So I have to come up with a scheme that's going to fill in all of this. But before that, I got to finish all this fastening and I need lots of fasteners in here because I need to transfer all the structural stiffness of the bulkhead from this beam to the frames. <laughs> begin by cleaning up this edge which has a lot of uh, glued on junk and bits of wood. Okay that's reasonably flat. So I'm going to use this piece of a mahogany ply uh, to create the bulk of the curve piece um, and then put a cap and a base on it. Now, of course, I would love to be using solid mahogany for this, but this piece alone would, it, it's ridiculously expensive. Okay, what I need to do first is just uh, bevel the edges a bit so that they can sit against the cabin sides properly. All right then, so. Okay, now you can see the problem. I need to scribe on the far side of this piece of plywood against the existing uh, bulkhead cap there, the cabin top, basically. So the only way I can think of doing that, <laughs> I took a piece of a little plywood and I drilled a hole through it at an angle and stuck a pencil through it and then cut it off. So I have a little bit of lead there, uh, which I can resharpen a few times. Uh, otherwise, I can just stick the pencil through again. So we'll see if this works at all. Up here is the easy part. Well, let's see, is there any lead left on that? There's plenty. So uh, hopefully there's a line here. All right, let's take it off and see what we got. Folks, can you see that relatively good looking scribe line there? Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Very happy with that. Okay, no stress. I'm gonna wear my glasses to get a real good shot of this. And I'm gonna raise the blade fairly high, even though it's a pretty easy curve. I just want the cut to be as clean as possible. All right then, so the uh, line didn't actually transfer right to the very end, so I'm going to have a little bit of a hack for that. I'm going to take the piece I've already cut and lay it in here and use it as a template for the remainder of the curve. Okay! Whew. 
All right then, how does this look? Oh, it looks perfect. That's what it looks. Absolutely perfect. Okay, excellent. So now, um, if you're wondering about this mess here, I'm gonna put a piece of 3 8 into that uh, with a bullnose on it. So it'll create a detail at the top of this. And now I have to cut a parallel curve on the bottom that will just miss this by a quarter of an inch because I'm also going to put a quarter of an inch piece at the bottom which will cover up this gap because there's actually quite a large, even when that's on top of that, there's quite a large void under here. Okay, 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 this is going great. So this is actually going to be the first use of this beautiful new uh, compass I've been gifted. So we'll set this up for three and five eighths minus the quarter at the bottom, quarter being two eighths, um, uh, so three and three eighths. I'm just going to start at ten. Right there. All right, this should be fun. <laughs> Let's have a look here. Whoa, I only just left another enough wood by like a sixteenth of an inch. Wow, okay. Let's see what we can do here. <laughs> Jeepers, creepers. Whew. Beauty. Okay, as if the last cut wasn't stressful enough, now we have a ton of equity in this. Okay, 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 okay. Poi! Poi, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay then, so let's see. This fits in there nicely. And does the quarter inch fit underneath? Oh gosh, it looks like it does. Oh, fabulous. Ah, uh, my finger's out of the way. Ah, uh, there we go. Excellent. Wow, fantastic. Nice and stiff. Okay, that's fantastic. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, um, spacer blocks. Okay, this was a ton of work. Each one of these blocks was custom ripped to be the exact thickness appropriate here. Pain in the butt. But uh, we'll tack them on. And I'll add some screws to make them a little stronger. And uh, we'll get that plywood on here. These are number six screws, and for some reason I cannot find my Robertson number one driver bit. I've already spent more time looking for it than it would take to drive these by hand. Okay, so this is the final moment. I'm not gonna put too, too many in until the rest of the assembly comes together. Gosh forbid, it's gotta come apart. I can always fire a few more in after. Love it. All right, so I've decided I'm gonna make this top bull nose three quarter, even though the existing piece here is only half. I want a little more contrast between the three quarter inch at the top and the quarter at the bottom. Only problem is I have this little step here, so I needed to do a test piece with a test rabbit in it that lines up perfectly on there and <laughs> that'll bend. Uh, of course, there'll be a bull nose on this. So and now I just have to go and cut this rabbit into the finished piece, put a bull nose on and see how it works. All right, here we have a lovely piece of mahogany that I'll use for the top bullnose piece. Whew. Okay, so now we're set up to make that actual rabbit on the actual piece. Okay, so first thing I gotta do is sort of, huh, yet again, scribe um, the end conditions in uh, because they land on an angle to this piece, but this piece is also on an angle this way. It's a compound thing going on here. So, okay, well, it's a bevel this way and a bevel this way. So about like, th about like th that. Let's see how that looks. I just have to bring you over and have a look at this. 
Very nice, very nice, very, very nice. Okay, let's do something similar on the other side. <laughs> the trick is finding some way to keep this in place uh, while I do that. So what I'm gonna do is employ the handy dandy flip end to turn this clamp into a, uh, well, a spreader. And uh, hopefully that's long enough against this um, post here that we can uh, just put that right there and this right here and uh, you just stay there Whoa. but it's basically right there somewhere this way a little bit and out a little bit okay well I would say both angles are perfect I just have to take off another kerf and a half Curve and a half, that's a unit, right? Whoa, I'm gonna cry. That's more than a curve and a half. I missed by a full curve <laughs> and maybe another half. Okay, how does this get attached now? <laughs> another clamp over here. I'm very happy with the look. It'll look great with the last little bead on the bottom. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, so how am I going to fasten it? There's no way nails are going to hold this. I'm going to have to put screws and buttons. Yep, 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 yep. All right, so let's get a nice layout for these. This is uh, 25 inches across, so 12 and a half. What's the middle? And oh, what do we got? Okay, so I made up a schwack of plugs, including my uh, lines on them for grain. So this should go pretty easy. Sanding up against somewhere where there's a risk of the sander cutting in to this surface, I just take a cheap putty knife and uh, that guarantees that there's no way I can cause any damage on that surface. So this is getting a full bullnose on quarter inch and I don't have a quarter inch full bullnose tool so I just have to hand sand the whole thing so no problem. And the lower bead, gosh, I'm loving the way this is coming together. Um, this piece, I've already cut the length and should be just fine because I'm going to put a block in here that's going to tidy up all of this. So. I just love it. All right then, turning our attention to the aft end of the wheelhouse, it's time to take these uh, lovely cabinets out. Now, I actually love these cabinets, um, with the exception that I hate the design of them because, of course, they're just made out of plywood and they're that 1950s look we put in sometime in the 50s. Um, this one, unfortunately, has a massive vent in it, which was the old engine venting system, and I'm going to do something else about that. So if you saw the 3D visualization from a couple of weeks ago, you'll know that I'm going to put these cabinets back exactly where they are, but in a more period appropriate style. And um, with at least this one, if not all of them, um, with glass so that we can see into the cabinets. Again, all of this is got to go. This is just veneer over the original bulkhead and all this kind of stuff. Bits of trim up here that's got to go. Um, yeah, let's just dive in.
I'm going to uh, patch this actually. I have a little bit of this um, V-joint tongue and groove uh, left over from the forward bulkhead. Maybe I have enough little pieces uh, to patch this. And then when I take this cabinet apart, uh, when I work on the aft cabin, I may patch it horizontally as well. Anyway, it's, uh, yeah. Okay, I can get I can get something out of this, right? Okay, so this first one that I destroyed here is going to take the longest one for sure. Uh, that will have to do, even with a hole in it. Okay, so I'm going to have to sacrifice the tongue on this one and this one so that I can pop it in. And that's, oh, I feel bad about that, but it's still gonna be better than it might have been. I wanna put them as long as possible and stagger them so that the V-joint on the other side and the V-joint on this side don't have a single line of, uh, of uh, failure. So it seems a little overkill, I know, but I'm, I'm just, I feel better patching this up. Now I also wanna make sure that the splices land in the middle of one in the other direction. So I can easily just look over from here, from there, and here somewhere, right there. Okay, because this, I know this one is going here, I'm not going to install it yet because I'll cut the su successive cuts and that way I don't have to sacrifice as much of the tongue. Okay, that one will go there. And for the last one, I'm going to go tall again because I, I can easily put it in from the outside. How about this one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, 1930s mild steel nails are holding a lot better than 1930s Douglas fir. Whoosh! Okay, these tongues. And this last one is going to need to be ripped. So let's just tap it in, have a look at what we need to do here. All right then. Okay, well, that may not be really elegant, but I feel I've honored the boat with at least an attempt, an attempt at a patch. Of course, this will be veneered with 
mahogany plywood. And well, I'm very eager, of course, to get some oil on all this, um, but I want to give you a little bit of a state of the situation, a bit of a summary. Um, okay, we demolished what we need to from this bulkhead for now, and this will probably all work into what is going to happen here. Uh, there's lots left to do, of course. Got to abandon this whole wiring and some hardware. But mostly now I have to decide what I'm going to do about the finish on the inside of the house. Now, it's not bad, but it's not great. It's in many places, I don't know if you can see it, there's a lot of globs and blobs of varnish, uh, which I really, really don't like. I actually don't like a shiny. A uh, high gloss finish on the inside of a boat. I like it on the outside. Inside I like matte, which this boat would have had originally. If you look here, nice and beautiful. Whereas the globby varnish that was added later um, I, it doesn't work for me. But anyway, that's a very subtle thing. But what I have to do is decide if I'm going to do it now, because the very next project is actually beginning to build the benches in here. And that's out of necessity, because right now I'm still sleeping on a rather uncomfortable bunk in the aft cabin, and it's getting to be a bit of a bother trudging stuff through. So I'd love to be able to move into this cabin while I start working in the aft cabin. Living aboard a boat while refitting it is one thing. Living aboard a tiny boat while refitting it is another. Okay, so here are the problems here. We have a mismatch of hardware, which is fine, I can deal with that. This thing is just delightful. It's not in the right window anymore, but we'll deal with that. Um, we have some nice, but not exactly period hardware, which I'm going to keep. Uh, this door has to be kept on a bungee because the hinge is broken. And then we have all kinds of other little bits and pieces, including this kind of uh, unfortunate plywood valence that was added. So there's a bunch of stuff to take apart. But then what do we do with things like all these old screw holes? Now, it's easy to say, oh, Peter, just drill them out and bung them. Only problem is this is Honduran mahogany with a lifetime of patina set into it. If I drill that out, bung it with uh, Sapelli, you'll have a very dark red mismatched bung. Not only that, to sand it, I'm going to corrupt the patina, possibly. That's what I'm going to play with a few things. I may try a little bit of sawdust in epoxy filled in there and then sanded lightly. I don't have to have them go away. I just don't want them to be, you know, too ragged, jagged. So don't experiment with that. Um, before I get oil on here, I have to sand this. You've seen me just start to experiment with it um, because I won't be able to sand against this in the future or I'll be damaging this. So there's lots of little bits of exploration I'm going to do in here that I'm not sure is going to be all that interesting, but I'll take you along for some of it. All right, so my first experiment is going to see if I can do a bung repair. Uh, so because the finish on here, the varnish on here is so, so thick, I'm going to be sanding it anyway to smooth it out and take the gloss off that maybe I can sand the head of the bung. And uh, anyway, we'll, we'll see how that works. I've got the counterbore set uh, with no real drilling. There we go. We'll put a bung in there. Cut it off. Sand it. And a little oil to activate the color. Now you can see the color doesn't match very well just yet, but the neat thing about Sapelli is that it soaks up the oil over time and by tomorrow that will show me the color it's going to end up as. And happily I haven't changed the patina of the surrounding wood, although it is now nice and smooth and no high gloss finish. These hatch days are delightful, especially this one. Unfortunately, I don't have a match set. This one was um, added and when this one was lost at some point. Uh, this one, unfortunately, is on upside down. But anyway, I can certainly put it right next time I install it. So it's got to come off at least temporarily. I'm going to save these screws. Um, they're uh, bronze, but they are Robertson, which, of course, <laughs> I'm always raving about. But strangely enough, I'd rather not see Robertson screws exposed on a boat. I will replace these with uh, regular slotted head screws. This is actually a very, very nice little stay. Um, it's easily reversible. Um, if you know where one of these might be found, I'd be very, very grateful. Okay, we'll find a use for this somewhere. 
this thing is just so delightful and of course I could transfer it to this window which is the window I'm going to see out when I'm driving from now on but I, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do but anyway I'll take it off and look after it in the meantime oh my gosh this is the craziest fastener I have ever seen I have literally never seen one of these before if you look at it here I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> it's a um, slotted head screw. However, it's an acorn nut. <laughs> it's so cool. Um, I've never in my entire life seen a fastener like that. Cool. Very cute. To be fair, there will be some sort of valence going back on here. Um, I'm not quite sure how it's going to be designed yet, but it'll probably be standing out a little bit uh, so that I can put uh, strip lighting in the top so that it will uh, wash um, the white overheads here because there's no opportunity to run wires up here. I can't put any overhead lighting in. So I think that'll work out really well. Plus, down washing on the wood always looks so gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. go very neat very neat very neat I really wonder if these are bronze under here uh, this I very much doubt is I kind of wonder if it's plated copper pipe goodness Nice hardware, and if I can uh, deplate it somehow, it'll certainly go right back where it was. I'm sure it goes without saying, but if you're cutting live wires, don't cut both conductors at once. Okay. Gosh, I hope he's a bronze. Oddly satisfying. Now you can see the shadow of a light fixture that was here at one point and I have the fixture and a beautiful wood block. I'll show you what they look like. The boat is blessed with five of them and I really, really like them. Uh, I'll find a way to uh, incorporate them into the final design. They were, of course, they're 110 AC fixtures that have been converted to use 12 volt. And here we go, the moment I've been waiting for for, well, weeks. Well, actually, probably, I, it's just an endless joy. Okay, let's get some oil on here. Well, I can certainly say I am very, very pleased with that. Um, you'll notice that this plywood here seems to be a bit lighter. Well, this is the same wood as this. So it takes a little while for Tongwell to do its magic. This will look like this next week. Speaking of Tongwell doing its magic, how's our little bung doing here? Wow, how about that? So uh, all of these I'll fix with bungs. Very nice. Welcome to the Travel with Jordy Beer of the Week, coming to you live from Portland, Oregon, from the Ten Barrel, Ten Barrel uh, Brewery, uh, where I'm enjoying, where I'm enjoying Apocalypse, uh, which is yet another uh, West Coast IPA, and you are having Cloud Mentality. Cloud Mentality. Well, let's see what we think of this. Cheers. <laughs> An above average West Coast IPA, I would yeah, say. Me. And, and your cloud mentality, what kind of beer is it? It's a hazy something. It's a hazy something. Well, 
<laughs> anyway, let's jump right in. Um, last week's winner, last Wednesday, midweek's winner of a Troubles with Jordy t-shirt is uh, John Carter. John Carter, get a hold of me and we'll make sure you get your uh, t-shirt. Um, we don't have much else to say, but we need a word of the week. Do you have a word of the week for us? I do. And what is it? Pause. Pause. How do you spell, which spelling of pause? Whichever way you like. Any any spelling at all? Okay, well the Travel Journey word of the week this week is pause. I don't know what you're going to do with that. Cheers. Cheers. To pause. <laughs>